Welcome to you all, and uh, the, it's uh, for me a very moving talk because, uh, as you can see, Randolph Glanville, who was uh, <coughs> very active uh, during uh, 10 years or so, he started, I think, uh, 2003 or 2004, and he came here every year made wonderful presentations. Uh, he wasn't here last year uh, due to his cancer, and he died uh, in December of last year. And I would like to start the presentation with an anecdote which happened yesterday uh, when I had uh, dinner. And the waitress came to me, and she asked me, how is your friend? And I was surprised, and then I remembered uh, she was asking me for Randolph. Because last year, uh, I, I was uh, alone already, and uh, I then remembered myself that we talked uh, quite a lot about last year, about uh, Randolph and uh, his health conditions and so on. And she remembered now me, and she asked me, uh, about Reinhardt, and then I uh, said he died, and uh, she wept for a second. And um, I tell you this story, and I was very moved as well. I tell you this story because uh, it tells you something about the way he interacted with persons. He had a very open and friendly way of interacting and creating very unusual situations also for waitresses, for example, or, or, or for taxi drivers and so on. And uh, it was not uh, something that they didn't like, so they, they, like, they like to remember it. And, and it was uh, very astonishing for me yesterday that the waitress remembered me and remembered Reinhold and remembered that we were together <coughs> uh, for many years and uh, so I wanted to start this uh, presentation with this anecdote. So uh, you have here a presentation which is in segmented in five points. Uh, here he is, uh, Reinhold, um, and I put his last positions on the board. He was president of the American Society of Cybernetics from 2009 to 2014. He was uh, in the final stage of his life, professor for innovation design and professor for research design in Belgium at the Catholic uh, University of Leuven. Um, in terms of uh, disciplina disciplinarity and interdisciplinarity, um, Reynolds was an example of the disadvantages of being very good in many disciplines. So he was, he worked with architects, he worked with designers, he worked with cyberneticians. Uh, he himself saw him as the arch second order cybernetician. He worked with system theorists, he worked uh, with musicians. Uh, he had some art projects going. Uh, he published in numerous journals. And 
due to all his activities, uh, people simply couldn't make sense of what he was doing. He was uh, always far more, um, far wider than his audience. The, the audience was uh, uh, maybe a group of cyberneticians or a group of architects and so on, but uh, uh, they didn't quite get the idea of what he was, uh, uh, what he was uh <coughs> at and so on. And uh, so, he was an example of uh, the disadvantages of being uh, versatile in too many disciplines uh, and, and uh, due to his, uh, in his activities. Um, and there's a second reason why he was not recognized uh, very much, especially in the European, in the German, uh, in the German context. Uh, in the German context, we had a very interesting uh, way of building a so-called uh, Hall of Fame of uh, Radical Constructivism. Uh, uh, this was this umbrella term for all sorts of varieties of, co of constructivists. Uh, the term radical constructivism was invented first by Ernst von Glasersfeld. Ernst von Glasersfeld in 1974 wrote an article about Jean Piaget and he called Jean Piaget a radical constructivist. In the year 85, 86, there were a lot of uh, publication uh, activities by a German professor for literature. His name was S.J. Schmidt, and he made very val valuable contributions by ha having translations of Heinz von Förster, Humberto Maturana, and, and uh, Ernst von Glasersfeld in 85 and 86, and in 87 he published a book called The Discourse of Radical Constructivism. <coughs> the Disc Radical Constructivism in this construction by Schmidt, 87, included Heinz von Förster, uh, he figured there very prominently, uh, Ernst von Glasersfeld, Umberto Maturana, Francisco Varela, Niklas Luhmann, was an important member of radical constructivism. <coughs> then there were several German authors, but this was the set of radical constructivists. Even Jean Piaget, who was the reason for radical constructivism in Glasersfeld's article, was not included in, in this uh, Schmidt book, and uh, a very important group was left out completely. Uh, there were very interesting British cyberneticians, Gordon Pask and his school, and uh, <coughs> they were not even mentioned in this uh, construction of uh, radical constructivism. And, and this was, uh, and of course, Reynolds Glanville and Bernard Scott uh, were left out completely together with uh, Pask. So also within this uh, community of radical constructivists, uh, Reynolds was an outsider because the Hall of Fame was constructed in a way that which left, uh, had no place for Pask, Glanville, Scott, and others. Um, during the last uh, three years or five years of his life, uh, we pursued an, an enormous book project. What we did uh, was to produce a set of three volumes uh, which contained all the relevant articles which Reynolds wrote. And the first volume was volume three. And there was this, uh, there's this journal for uh, second order cybernetics which is called Cybernetics and Human Knowing and uh, Reynolds wrote uh, uh, articles under the a term of uh, cybernetic musings in, in cybernetics and human knowings, and uh, there were 39 articles. Uh, so the title of this book was 39 Steps, contained these 39 articles, and uh, these are all his contributions on, uh, from cybernetics and human knowing. Uh, but then there were the far more difficult uh, projects of volume one and volume two. And uh, these uh, volumes were then, in, 
from 2011 to 2014 were then organized and ordered by Reinhold himself. He produced the order which, I, which you can see now uh, on, the uh, on the board. And uh, it, it is uh, volume one has the title, subtitle, uh, Cybernetic Circles. Volume two has the title, Living in Cybernetic Circles. And I will tell you a little bit about this uh, later on. But uh, volume one, uh, the main areas are under the headings of objects, the black box, and uh, in volume two is, uh, these are some sort of explorations in the field of uh, design uh, representation with a strong emphasis on language, uh, knowing education, and others, uh, these are articles by Reinhold on people like Richard Jung, uh, Gordon Pass, Heinz von Förster, Ernst von Glasersfeld, and so on. So that's the distinction in the order he produced for these two volumes, and he, until the last uh, weeks or so of his life, worked on making changes and so on, and final changes, uh, especially then on, uh, with respect to volume two. Um, and then I want to give you a very brief epoxy approximation to Reynolds work uh, and the first one in terms of goals and they produce three very characteristic uh, quotations which tell you something what he wanted to pursue uh, the first quotation is my work might be thought of as a generalization of the work of others so uh, what others were doing but I generalize it uh, then there's a very beautiful metaphor uh, about games. Uh, many of us watch games. Some play, others empire, referees, still others govern games and so on. Um, um, there are some who create the field of play, mark and maintain it, the potential is not, however, limited to games. Other may use the ground in a completely unanticipated way, unintended by th those who set up the ground. Behind all these, there's a person who creates the possibility of the blank field on which all the potential can be expected. That person is me, Reinhold. Uh, and that is my work. I create the unformed empty field for a multiplicity or for a huge potential of for others to play but my role i see my role as creating the empty field or similar a very similar characterization cybernetics is often considered as a meta field the cybernetics of cybernetics is thus a meta meta field my work is therefore a meta, meta, meta field. So whatever you create at which level, meta level ever, but I'm the person behind this meta level. I'm the meta, meta level to, to what uh, uh <coughs> has been produced by others. So it's, uh, this is simply to say to you that uh, it's a very specific, unique perspective which he tries to pursue, and uh, it's, uh, and one want to use now two um, other approximation steps to Reynolds. The second approximation step is uh, this, uh, this, the subtitles of the book. Uh, the subtitle to volume one is uh, Cybernetic Circles. Uh, the subtitle volume two is Living in Cybernetic Circles. And it's important that he saw uh, what he was doing theoretically. This was not something which he did and then he tried to apply it. Uh, some sort of, uh, here's the theory and here's the application. But he saw of this as a, as a process of uh, um, 
action reflection cycles. So, so what he, volume two is not applications, but it's uh, ap exploration within such an action reflection cycle. He provided some th theoretical tools, uh, building blocks, elements uh, with which to explore in architecture, design, and so on. But uh, this was a necessary second step in this action reflection cycle. And, and then this uh, cycle goes back to maybe m modifying the theoretical elements and so on. So it's uh, in this, he lived in these uh, action reflection cycles and uh, the subtitles of the book are a clear indication of this. And uh, the third one, third approximation is, uh, um, it's very important to see that what, whatever Reynolds wrote, and he wrote it from a perspective of from within. Whenever he was dealing with something, he was part of this. It, it, it was not uh, what, what one could may, uh, call the exo mode. The, the exo mode is uh, the usual <coughs> description of the world. One, one, one. Uh, and, and the descriptions do not include the ob observer or don't ex include the, the person who described it. Uh, for Reynolds, uh, it's this view from within and what, what I call the endo mode where you are always uh, part of the world, part of the design, part of the operation and uh, you, you cannot eliminate. Uh, you are a necessary part, necessary for this type of operation. So, so it's, uh, I've seen probably no one who was so consequent in this endo mode in everything which he did. So these were some initial approximation and I think uh, time is running uh, short, but I want to give you simply an idea of uh, some of the basic notions. The first one is the notion of objects. And when you hear the word objects uh, outside of Reynolds, uh, you might think of refrigerators, notebooks, pictures, uh, chairs, tables, and so on. These are objects. Uh, for Reynolds, he <laughs> had a very peculiar meaning for objects. Uh, for Reynolds, objects, and objects is also, was also the title of his dissertation. Um, objects are units, whatever these units are, with the ability to observe others and to observe themselves. So whatever unit can be human, could be an animal, it could be a machine, a unit with this ab ability to observe, and observe also not in the sense of seeing, but uh, establishing some links with the environment. Observe in, in, in this technical sense. These are objects, and uh, in, the, in, in the history of philosophy, I found uh, one approach which has some similarities, uh, and that's uh, Leibniz and his monadology and the monads in Leibniz, uh, they are these uh, basic units of which uh, the universe consists and uh, Leibniz was then, had all sorts of problems also with these monads, but, but, but they, they were the basic units and the basic units in the case of uh, Glanville uh, or Reynolds are these objects. Objects are the basic units uh, of analysis and the world of objects comes about and he, uses this first and most important principle of uh, mutual reciprocity and then uh, give, give you one of the descriptions of it. To enter into a universe of observation and into a universe where of these objects, I must observe myself. If I substitute the word know for observe, the form of the answer is the same. I know myself. I generalize this formulation to all inhabitants of the universe, to all objects with this ability. They must all be assumed to observe themselves. 
there's no way to test this. It is simply a condition for entry into the universe, an assumption or axiom of the system of understanding. So this uh, uh, objects and this principle of mutual reci re reciprocity, whatever you say of yourself, you have to say of other objects as well. And uh, the second uh, notion I want to bring your attention is the notion of black boxes. The black boxes uh, for him becomes the universal model for how we come to construct our understanding through which we name the world. The patterns which can be generated with a black box only exist as an explanation created by the experimenter. An explanation that is of non exist that is of a non existent box with no inside or outside, imagined into place by the experimenter. What's in it can't be examined because there is no box. Uh, and uh, this is some sort of uh, epistemological constraint. Uh, we live in a universe of black boxes. We are not able to see inside what's inside. We are only, and we <laughs> assume that it's a black box. It's our, it's our role of making the boundaries of these black boxes and creating this universe of black boxes and, uh, uh, and, and uh, it's then you know, now I've written a longer article in, in the memorial issue of Randolph and I've gone more into detail and so on and um, <coughs> um, would also be happy to send it to anyone who has an interest. But it's, it's really interesting what he did from these uh, two basic ideas. The universe of objects as a starting point, and this some sort of Leibnizian version, vision, and then the black box is an epistemological constraint of what we can know about uh, the world. Um, and uh, I come to my last point already, and that's uh, in terms of legacy. Uh, one point, part of the legacy is uh, we were able to finalize the three volumes of uh, his articles uh, under the name of uh, the black box. Uh, in And uh, there is a special edition of the black box, which is actually... Uh, I've bought only two volumes, but there's a third volume, which is also completely black. And there is a box around these three volumes, also completely black. So here you have a perfect uh, uh, symbiosis between content and form. And uh, there's no, we don't know which volume it is. Uh, it's, they are completely black. Uh, it's a black box, uh, as far as uh, you can get. Uh, we have produced uh, a small number, 50 of these black boxes. Uh, some of them are still available, so if you are interested, it, it, it's a very special edition of a, for a book, uh, or at least for a university, to the university library. Uh, so that's uh, a legacy, especially because he worked on these articles until the last weeks or so of his life. And, and it was very important that they <coughs> have this form and uh, they are produced in this order. Uh, these three volumes are uh, some sort of encyclopedia of second order cybernetics uh, for different uh, groups and uh, disciplines, for designers, architects, social scientists, linguists, musicians, philosophers. Uh, you all ca can get some value by interacting with this type of black box. Um, in terms of his intentions, uh, he left an enormous play field of play fields to play all sorts of things. So this is up to us, what we can make of it. Uh, and uh, as a final remark, um, I talked a little bit about the 
disadvantages of being too engaged in too many disciplines. Uh, in, in some sense, for example, for, for me personally, it, it became only clear what he was doing and what, what he was up to uh, in, uh, by working with him on, 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 on these volumes. So, so it's uh, uh, only by 2014 or so, I knew that he pursued this very ambitious and unique, uh, some sort of transcendental framework for second order cybernetics. And uh, in, in this sense, he was probably, because he was talking to audiences worldwide for decades uh, who didn't share his <coughs> agenda and uh, didn't know about it and, uh, and so on. He was some sort of the tragic hero of second order cybernetics. Uh, so thank you for your.